Hello and welcome. This module you're going to be introduced to the basics of animation. So before we get into anything with it, I want to talk about this lower section here. If you don't have this section here uh, with the time slider and all this other information, come up to Windows, Workspaces, and go to Maya Classic. If it's still not showing up, go to re re Reset Maya Classic to Factory Default. By doing that, it should bring everything back up uh, so that you can make sure that it's usable. Now the time slider down here is what you're going to use to help you start creating animations. As you can see, there's this uh, gray marker. This shows what frame it's currently on. And as I change it around, you'll notice that it updates over here on the right side. I can also play through the animation. I can uh, skip back a step. I can go all the way to the beginning. Um, I can play in reverse. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, to just play through right here. You can also grab and drag and this is called scrubbing through an animation where you're just grabbing it and looking at it really fast. But that's the time slider. Now the values that control the time slider are located below it. If you look here at this bar, this is the area that's currently visible. So right now it's between 1 and 120, so that's 120 frames. And I can grab and drag that down. If you'll notice the, uh, the time slider or excuse me, on the uh, timeline. Um, but this shows you where things are on the timeline at any point. So right now it's 1 to 38. These outside numbers, so from here, this one, to this outside number here, 200, are the, is the total time on your timeline. So if you scale this clear up, it's between 1 and 200. So I can adjust that, so I can take that and make that 120. And so now my timeline is constrained to 1 and 120. 1 is the minimum, 120 is the maximum. These inner numbers, so right there and there, correlate to what's being shown on the timeline. So I can actually change this to, uh, let's see, 24 and 48. And you'll see that even though I've got a total value of 1 to 120, it's only showing me between frames 24 and 48. So I can move that back and forth. I can adjust it however I need to. In this case, I'll make it, ooh, not 25, 48. Um, 48, bring that back down to 120. But I can change this however I need to. Over here, this is the frames per second. Right now it's set to 24 frames a second, I can leave it there. Um, but there are different frames for different purposes, but this will show you what your playback speed will also be. Uh, in a lot of cases, as you're playing through, it'll move too fast or too slow. Um, it, it'll have some variability, but if you right click on the timeline, and go up to playback speed, you can set it to real time to make sure that it's playing at the speed it should. So I'll give you a quick example of that. If I grab a cube, raise it up, and on the first frame right here, I'm gonna hit the S key. Let me show you what just happened right there. If I go to the attribute editor, I'll, I'll step back, control Z, but if I hit the S key, You'll notice that everything turns red. That shows that there is some incoming information that's kind of locking these attributes. And if I go to frame 24 and I bring it down here, I hit the S key again. Now I can scrub in the animation. And if I hit play, this is about the speed it's going to happen. So 1, 1,000. So you have the 1 second, 2 seconds. So 24 frames a second. All right. Um, but if I don't have it set to play at real time, if it's just play every frame free or whatever else, you'll notice that it's going much, much faster. So if you want to see how it actually should look at speed, set it to real time. And then this should actually show it. And if you'll also notice at the end over here, it just stays at whatever that last frame is because it doesn't have any new information about where to go with the animation. Now there are a lot of different things that you can animate. Right now I'm animating the object. So if I just bring this here um, very quickly, I'm going to create a ground plane and I will scale this up. Now this ground plane, I am going to set to one and one because there's no reason for me to have a lot of geometry here. Grab this cube again. I'm actually gonna adjust the pivot. So hit the D key, hold down the V key for snap to point, D key again hold down the X key for snap to grid, and I'm gonna bring that down to the ground. So with it down on the ground, I will hit S key again, make sure that, oh, step back, uh, make sure that that's coming where it needs to, and you see that I, I just messed up with the back step there, so 
S again, and now it should come down to the ground. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another little cube right here. Bring it over to the side. And come back two frames. And you'll notice two frames back, this doesn't work for me because it's not quite hitting the next frame it's passing through. And so what I can do is I can actually have two different animations. At this point, it shouldn't be turning at all. Uh, at this point, it would need to be up in position. But I want to show you something else that can, that can go wrong here. So let me step back just a little bit. Before I add those in, uh, one thing we might be inclined to do is actually set up the end point where we want it to be. So instead of just coming straight down, like that, um, we may want it to, when it hits the ground, let me switch to a front view, be rotated up. So I'm actually going to switch the pivot again. So hit the D key, hold down the V to snap to that point, D key. And that way I can angle this up. And right now uh, I've got the snap step turned on. So I'm going to turn that off so I can get this set up where I want it to be. I'm going to get this lined up right here with this edge. I can hit the S key. Now the problem that you're going to see very quickly is that by doing it this way, and that's great, it gets me where I need to be at the beginning, is up here, where I need to be at the end, but it figures out the transition in between, which means it starts the rotation before it ever hits that block on the bottom, which doesn't really work for us. And you also notice there's a little bit of that, uh, the easing right there. So what I need to do is actually make some adjustments yet again. So if I want to make this work, I'm going to step back to this frame, 22. That's back where it was flat. And I can go to the Attribute Editor, change that rotation to a 0. And I can come down here. And i got to make sure that that's not being selected anymore. So I'll actually click in the scene on the object and hit the S key. Find that frame in between. Because right now, it's going to try and do that transition. And I could just adjust the curves. Um, and you see there's this. But it has that point where it passes through. So the fastest way to fix that on this small of a scale is just to move it up and hit the S key again. And that way it transitions it for me. But it's also not moving in exactly the way I would like it to. So if you need to play around with things to get them to work better, this is where you can use one of the windows up here. So we'll go Windows, Rendering Editors or excuse me, uh, animation editors, and we'll go to the graph editor. So with the graph editor open, let me explain how this works. The graph editor is the curve explanation of what's happening here with the keys. This is, or with the keys. This is how you get some easing in and easing out, uh, rather than just having it go straight and even the whole time. In real life, things have inertia, things have force. You have uh, like, peaks of your uh, arcs. You have other things where you slow and then speed up again, and there, there's variations in movement. And so you need to be able to control that within your animation. And that's what these do. So these are showing different ways that the curves are being represented. Each of these lines represents a different curve. I can isolate them by clicking on them over here. So that's the translate Y. That's the movement down. So if I need this to uh, go a little bit faster, if you notice it kind of eases in and then eases out, I can actually change that a little bit. So I can come here to this first frame. Let me actually get everything in view. Oop. Shift this just a little bit. I'm going to come here first. And I am going to uh, start scaling things up just a little. Bring that over. If I grab this first one, rather than having that ease in, I want this to drop straight down. And I want it to be a straight angle. I can also use some of these tools up here to make sure that it's lining up directly with the next one in line. So I can do that. I can do this right here, make sure that's lining up. Um, I can come back here and soften some of these. So grab this and soften that out. But what I'm seeing is that there's this drop and I need it to keep that same speed. So I can put that exactly in line. So I'm actually making some adjustments right here 
to where things are. If it's going to have that even speed for the drop rather than easing in or out, it's going to be here two frames before. The frame before, it's going to be right there. And the final frame, it's just going to hit. And so if I needed to get more of that detail in, I could actually do it across a larger number of frames and then just speed up the animation. But in essence, I need things to work out. So I'm actually going to take this come right here and I know that that's where I need to be drop wise but I don't want it bending or angling just yet so I'm going to change that to a zero hit the S key here delete this keyframe and so now it's here and the next frame it will be in place but it's also going to be going at a very specific rate or specific speed and so if I find that that's not fast enough, I can actually increase that speed. I can uh, make other adjustments as I need to. But there are a lot of ways that I can play around with this. I just want to make you aware that this, hyper, or this graph editor is here because there are a lot of things you can do. For example, if I wanted to, um, I could actually play around with this more, raise this up, and give it an arch. For example, as if this is being thrown up in the air and then comes down. And that's just by playing with these curves in the graph editor. So let me stop this really quick. But this is object animation. I am using the entire object and animating it. So let me grab another object and show this in a slightly different way. So I'm going to grab this uh, sphere here. I'm going to adjust some of the sphere information. So drop this to 8 and 8. And with this sphere, I'm going to come back to the first frame. And if you notice, with this sphere selected, the keyframes are gone. The keyframes show up when you have an object or a component selected that's being influenced by the keyframes. So here, this just drops down and does its thing. And I could continue the animation. I could uh, come over here and have it flop over. So doing this, negative 90. Hit S. And, and oh, let me correct that. Make sure I click in the scene, select the object, then select S. So now I've got this animation, it drops and f rolls over. Um, but for this object, when I select it, there's nothing here. And let me show you something else as well. I hit the S key to show that this is the first part, and then I move it down into position. I want it to go here, and over here, I want it on frame 24, so I click there. If you notice, it pops back. When you scrub, it doesn't worry about where the object was just moved to. It tries to show where it actually is as things are saved in the animation. So if you want to add something in, you need to first get to the position on the timeline, then move the object down into position, and then you can hit the S key. And right about here, I'm going to save a second frame so that I can come back here. So you see now I've got this nice drop. But here I'm actually going to do a squash. So I'm adjusting that scale. And then I'm going to hit the S key once more. And then here I'm bouncing back. So let me uh, grab that first frame, do copy. Frame 48, paste. And then actually right about here, make sure this is back at a 1. And grab the object in the scene, so it will deselect there. Hit S. And so now I've got this where it squashes. And there would be some elongation at the top as well and afterwards, but you get the idea. This is something to start playing around with. So now I'm adjusting an object, uh, its position, its scale. I can even play around with rotation. So I'm going to grab another cube, bring that here. Go to the first frame, S. Go to the last frame. Over here, I'm going to scale it up. I'm also going to rotate it and hit S. So now I've got this object that's moving in scale. The cool thing is this also applies to components, but in a slightly different way. So let me get one more object here. Grab uh, this cylinder really fast. Go to its attributes, lower that to six sides. And then I'll bring that over here. And I'm going to take this object, first frame, I will hit S, 
over here. I will just simply move it across so that you can see very clearly how this works. So that's just moving across. Now if I want to, I can adjust some of the components. So I can grab a face, and if you'll notice, there, even though the object has frames, so if I go back to object mode, this has specific frames across here. When I go to select a component, it does not. That becomes something that independently can be animated. So I will grab this, select S. Uh, here I will scale it up, move it out, and then I'm going to copy this. So right click copy on frame 48, paste, and so that's going to make that have that transition. If you'll notice, the components move as children of the parent. So if I come back and select this as an object, and I delete these two frames. So grab this one first, delete, grab this one. Actually, I can just leave that on. But if I play through it now, you'll notice just that component is moving. I'm going to control Z to step back so you can see. So with that frame in. And so the child, just as like a, a child joint on a skeleton moves independently of the parent until the parent moves then it moves in relationship to the whole the whole uh, section the child and parent relationship here is the same as well on the same note I can animate a vertice moving so I'll grab that vertice s 24 move it up 48 move that clear down and it moves in relationship to the parent. And I can do the same thing once more. I'm going to grab an edge, S, scale that clear out, S. Over here, I can rotate it, S. And at 48, I will just copy that uh, first frame, copy 48, paste. And so it's going to go through this cycle where it goes out and then comes back. All right, so that's it to get you started. For now, just start playing around with things. Uh, try things out, see what happens. Um, oh, I accidentally hit create an extra one in there. Let me <laughs> grab just one. Let me stop the animation. Uh, clear that out, and I'll want to create a new plane because I just did some breaking. Bring that back to one and one. All right. But anyways, but this gives you an idea of some things you can do uh, to start getting used to animation. So for right now, start creating some primitives and just play around with them. Try animating them as a whole object. Try animating components of them. Uh, pull in something that you've rigged and animate the skeleton, the IK handles, the locators. Just play around with it. Once again, this is another case of the more you play around with this and the more you do, the better you're going to get at it. So take the time to really just explore and play right now and get used to the tools.